Minister of Romy gives an elucidation about St. Martin's economic and spatial development, past and present. Former Minister of Education queries if we are ready to start online learning in the new school year. And Minister of Teat welcomes back American tourists to the island. Those are the headlines for August the 3rd, 2020. This is SSM Daily News. I am Valerie Van Putten. And as usual, we have a packed newscast for you this evening, so let's get started. In our first story, St. Martin reopened its borders to travelers originating from the United States on Saturday, August the 1st. In preparation to welcoming those passengers, the Princess Juliana International Airport, in collaboration with the Ministry of VSR and TEAT, put in place all the precautionary measures to ensure the safety and well-being of visitors and residents alike. That means that travelers arriving at the Princess Juliana International Airport, especially those traveling from the United States, will have to follow the set protocol guidelines. On Saturday, some five flights, four from the United States and one from France, carrying some 540 passengers, landed at the airport. The Honorable Minister with the responsibility for TEAT is Ludmila De Weaver. We had four flights coming from the U.S. and then our regular Air France flight. So that was five in total. We had about 540 persons coming into the island. Over 200 of that is passengers coming off the Air France. And the group that was prepared uh, and trained by the Ministry of Public Health, they vetted very intensely all of the documents coming in, and as a result, they ended up uh, retesting about 12 and a half percent. The final number was about 69 persons mm. that were tested yesterday because their testing details were not sufficient for the the, the group from VSA that is vetting, that's led by the doctor. So, and at the end of the day, I was very happy knowing how strictly controlled it was, and the fact that we can start having people coming back to the island which will affect and roll over into people returning back to work from the airport that haven't been working for since March, and then trickle down to the rest of the economy to everyone else who's going to benefit from that. Whether it's our taxi drivers, our hotels, our restaurants, our tour operators. So it's something that I was very happy to see happen, regardless of the fact that we're living in a time where people are trying to get used to this new normal and social distancing. So. With all of this, we're still very much promoting everyone to be safe as well and continue physical distancing, continue wearing your mask, continue washing your hands, continue your face. Four flights out of the U.S., can you give us an idea as to who they were? The first one coming in was JetBlue from JFK. JetBlue has stopped their flight from Florida for the time being. And the second flight in was Spirit from Florida, Fort Lauderdale. And American were the final two coming from um, Charlotte and Miami. Now, what is something for me that is important for people to realize, with the combination of our requirements for entry being so strict, to come where you have to test and receive your results within 72 hours, and the fact that the border with the French side was closed by the French government, by the process, uh, they that affected the numbers of people coming. Now, we know the decision of the French side to close the border. How much has that affected the arrival of passengers coming from the U.S., Minister? Well, the news came out, the article came out from the French side, I believe, around Thursday. And, for instance, one of our flights had 178 passengers coming in. When persons heard the news of the French side, they, they thought that when they saw St. Martin, that it referred to the entire island, St. Martin. Mm -hmm. So that resulted in uh, about 100 passengers canceling their flights. So that, that plane, instead of being 179, it ended up having 78 passengers in it. Now, all of the loads of the planes that I've been seeing were less than 90 for the rest of the week, which is manageable for us. But I'm sure that things will start to pick up as you know the press release from the Dutch side comes out, which was actually done yesterday morning. So the, but yes, the French side has affected certain, some of the reservations and until we can 
totally match the protocol from the front side. Mm -hmm. They foresee, based on the report coming from Madame Las Cepet, that it will be closed for maybe about two weeks, two to three weeks. Meanwhile, Minister of Public Health, the Honorable Richard Panafleck, who was also on hand at the Princess Juliana International Airport last Saturday, August the 1st, to also welcome back American tourists to the island, the minister gave a recap of the testing that was done upon their arrival. The minister says that a total of more or less 30 passengers were swab tested. He gave more insight. A total of more or less 30 passengers were um, swapped, tested, because either the, the test was not the one that is required or perhaps something else. But anyhow, 30 was deemed to be, about 30 was deemed to be um, tested. It's the first day. We will continue as the ministries and government to watch out for the health of our community and our tourists. Um, we will continue doing tests. We will be continuing monitoring people. We will work hard to maintain the risk factor as low as possible. I would like to thank the minister and members of the Ministry of TIAT, the ministry cabinet members and workers of VSR and the members of PJIA, not forgetting naturally our brothers and sisters of justice by the immigration. It is a joint venture that we all have to do together. Only together we can do the job and bring back the tourists to our shores, which are very much needed for our industry. And in news out of the Netherlands at this time, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in The Hague has raised its travel advisory for St. Martin from yellow to orange on Sunday morning. The ministry has, are now urging people to only travel to and from the island for urgent reasons. The ministry decided to advise against vacation travel to St. Martin and to recommend only traveling to the island if absolutely necessary due to the increase in the number of active COVID cases in the past week. As per August the 1st, a total of 58 active cases were reported. Travelers from St. Martin arriving in the Netherlands are urgently advised to self-quarantine for 14 days. The Daily Herald understands that some 40 St. Martin students who will be arriving on a Royal Dutch Airlines KLM flight on Wednesday morning will have been tested before they boarded the flight. This is to avoid a quarantine so the students can participate in their introduction program. St. Martin is the first Dutch Caribbean island for which foreign affairs has issued code orange. Non-essential travel to St. Martin is advised against due to the large increase in the number of COVID-19 contaminations and the associated risk foreign affairs stated in its website on Sunday. In case of traveling to St. Martin for urgent reasons, passengers must fill in a health declaration prior to traveling via the website https slash They must also submit a negative result of a COVID-19 polymerase chain reaction PCR test obtained no more than 72 hours prior to departure and have travel insurance. Passengers are advised to stay informed via the website stmartinupdates.com slash the travel advisory of foreign affairs for Aruba, Bonaire, and Curacao is yellow, meaning that passengers should be aware of safety risks. Last week, Curacao already issued a negative travel advisory for St. Martin. And still to come, the Member of Parliament for the United Democrats weighs in on the border closure. We'll have the details to that story and much more when SXM Daily News returns. GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, 
powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. Welcome back, viewers. You're watching SXM Daily News. I am Valerie Von Putten. On Sunday, August the 2nd, leader of the United Democrats, Member of Parliament, the Honorable Sarah Westcott Williams, weighed in on the border closure, which has been initiated by Prefet, Madame Sylvie Faucher, as a result of an increase in the number of persons affected with COVID-19 and St. Martin reopening to visitors from the United States. The border control went into effect as per Friday, July the 31st. In a statement issued over the weekend to the media, Member of Parliament Westcott Williams stated that the decisions taken thus far regarding border closures on Saint Martin are too one-sided, even if one wishes to consider the reasons given for these unilateral uh, decisions. Saint Martin Saint Martin border closure has taken on a European context and should be elevated to a kingdom level, Member of Parliament Westcott said. With the announcement by the Prefecture of Saint Martin of another border closure in agreement with the Ministry of Overseas France and dubbed as a traffic restriction between the two parts of the island, we can no longer pretend that this is strictly a local matter left up to the authorities in Marigot and Phillipsburg. To further exacerbate and move this away from the local authorities is the decision by the Prefecture of Saint Martin to exempt certain categories of travelers arriving via the Princess Juliana International Airport and with specific reference to those persons from Schengen countries. The question therefore arises whether these decisions by and on behalf of the French state can be made or enforced without a discussion on a so-called four-party level between the Dutch Kingdom, the French state, and both local authorities on St. Martin. The decisions taken thus far regarding border closures on St. Martin are too one-sided, even if one considers the reasons given for these unilateral decisions. While locally, discussions are ongoing regarding the reach, some would say overreach, of the Dutch Kingdom via assistance from the government of the Netherlands into the autonomous affairs of the Caribbean countries, the matter of our borders and by extension any restrictions are clearly a matter of the Dutch Kingdom. That one part of St. Martin can unilaterally restrict travel on our island is a frightening thought. Today, it is corona-related. And tomorrow? This is not about who is right or wrong. This is about taking decisions in the interests of the population of both sides at all times. And it is about coming to consensus with respect for the other and the St. Martin people. By this move of the Prefecture of Saint Martin and the observation by the Prefecture that the health of the population is the only argument that guides our decisions, end of quote, the Prefecture is implicitly suggesting that our Council of Ministers is not doing the same for our population. If that was the case, 
Decisions taken with regard to the border would be joint decisions at all times. Several months ago, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Kingdom, Steph Block, responded to Second Chamber member Ronald van Raak regarding the border dispute at Oyster Pond and the Captain Oliver's saga. Minister Block, in his answers to the Second Chamber member, observed that the Treaty of Concordia does not address precise border demarcations on St. Martin. Again, implicitly, therefore, the point of departure for the Kingdom government is the Treaty of Concordia. Border negotiations are taking place, and the Oyster Pond border is only part of these discussions on the borders of St. Martin. Given the new normal due to the COVID-19 pandemic, it is high time that a matter of border closures etc. on St. Martin be regulated and regulated at the highest level. And as we continue now with more news, a one-day union leaders and members workshop was held on Saturday last, August the 1st, 2020, at the Weifel Building. Approximately 30 persons attended the workshop, which was for members of the boards of various unions. President of the White Clue, Claire Elshat, speaking exclusively to SXM Daily News, told our news team that the workshop was for the board and shop stewards, and it dealt with a number of issues pertaining to the workers. Um, the Windward Island Chamber of Labor Unions, um, with the different various unions, held a workshop today, and the workshop was for actually members of the boards of the various unions, um, the shop stewards and the cadres. And in this workshop, we dealt with a number of issues pertaining to the workers. So we are aware of the fact that there are a number of cost-cutting measures that in principle, it is being said out there that, oh, the unions agreed with the government on these measures. The fact is that we are making plans due to the fact that the measures have now increased and every time you turn or every way you turn, when you turn to Mr. Knops as State Secretary to say, no cuts, take these cuts off of the table, he is responding that it is our government. So when you have um, the rights of your workers, the rights to development, we had to analyze our situation uh, that we are in. We had to also um, come up with proposals as unions and strategies to be able to uh, get the ingredients for our memorandum of understanding because these cost-cutting measures if you are listening to different entities and their, um, the ombudsman and uh, different uh, entities, the general chamber of audit chamber, you would see that it is not only the unions that are saying that these are illegal or violating the rights of the workers and the human rights, but you have a number of persons, well, a hundred Frenchmen could never be wrong. So it was actually to get our shop stewards um, and the, or the cadres of the different unions acquainted with a number of issues so that they can also be able to be equipped in representing themselves and the workers when it comes to these issues. So definitely the whole um, you know, workshop was about your rights, your social, economic, and cultural rights, your rights to development as workers. And when you analyze these different cost-cutting measures, they are just regressive measures. They are touching the households and putting more financial strain on the people. And you can see that the poverty and the level of poverty would be then very um, vicious towards your members. 
And SXM Daily News will have more with the union leaders who attended the workshop in tomorrow's broadcast. Now, turning to our weather forecast for August the 3rd, 2020, lingering moisture in the wake of an area of disturbed weather coupled with a southeasterly wind flow could produce some isolated showers this evening. The chance of showers will reduce as the forecast period progresses and winds shift to a more easterly direction. Meanwhile, the Atlantic High Pressure Ridge will account for generally gentle winds. Slight to moderate marine conditions are expected for the next few days. So the outlook through Wednesday midday, partly cloudy with isolated showers possible. Now let's turn to your three-day forecast. And still to come, Minister of Romi gives an elucidation about St. Martin's economic and spatial development, past and present. And we'll have the details of that story and more when SSM Daily News returns. Make use of web mobile banking with easy access and direct usage of face recognition. PIN code. Or fingerprint. Download Wib Mobile Banking app and make your transaction from anywhere at any time. For more information, visit wib-bank.net forward slash quick dash login. And welcome back, viewers. This is SXM Daily News. And as we continue now with more news for you at this time, the House of Parliament sat in a plenary public session on Friday last, July the 31st, 2020. At the public meeting, the Minister of Public Housing, Spatial Planning, Environment and Infrastructure, Egbert Jorendi Doran, was in attendance. In his PowerPoint presentation, the Minister of Romi gave an elucidation about St. Martin's economic and spatial development, past and present. According to the Minister, the main focus of the zoning ordinance is to allow the government to establish development plans. The minister elaborated further. The main focus of the zoning ordinance is to allow the government to establish development plans, commonly referred to as zoning plans, to better manage and guide the spatial development of the country. In the case of St. Martin, having, a, having an economic development concept that has been the envy of our, many of our neighbors, this has led to the migration of persons from all parts of the globe to participate in the development of our country. Next. This has also resulted in St. Martin becoming the most densely populated country of the Caribbean in a relatively short period. The result of this also high demand of land for spatial development with competing land uses and the scarcity of the development of land leading to a very high land values. <clears throat> While the high land values are beneficial for land owners, on the other side of the coin is that certain sectors within society have a great difficulty in accessing land for adequate and affordable housing. These are former pictures of school of Saks or sort of before and after picture of how it looks recently. Slide five. This has led to the tendency to develop the green landscapes of the hillside that by their nature are difficult and, ex <clears throat> and expensive to properly develop and therefore are cause for many undesired hillside development that leave severe irreparable scars on our landscape. The zoning ordinance was established as an island ordinance on spatial development planning in 1993 and has since been transformed into a national ordinance of country St. Martin in 2013. The zoning ordinance formally included the provisions that required government's approval for private subdivision plans that are referred to as the planning permits, as well as provisions for the government to approve so-called civil works permits in Dutch, 
for various types of civil work. The aforementioned provisions have expired in 2012. This new proposal is aimed to reinstating the provisions to require civil works permit, which comes under Article 28A. Seven. The reasons that the requirement for a permit for civil works was originally established as a temporary provision, provision in the zoning ordinance was because it was anticipated that these civil works would be regulated by zoning plans. While the government has started the preparations of the zoning plans, the approach, for a, the approach is for a phase one, consisting of separate zoning plans per district, which will take several years for completion. The government has stated with the several preparations for the zoning plans for various areas, districts, which are different, which are at different stages of preparation at this time. And still to come, former Minister of Education queries if we are ready to start online learning in the new school year. And we'll have a detail to that story when SSM Daily News returns. And as we end this edition of SXM Daily News for you this evening, with the reopening of the schools, former Minister of Education, Mr. Wycliffe Smith, is asking the $100,000 question. Are we ready to start online learning in the new school year? In a press release issued on Sunday, August the 2nd, the former minister says that the Honorable Minister of Education, Culture, Youth and Sports, Dr. Randers Rodolph Samuel, has taken the bold decision to keep schools closed and to start the new school year with online learning until further notice. He communicated this to parents and guardians via a letter dated July the 31st, 2020. But are schools prepared to deliver education online? Unfortunately, the minister's decision came 10 days prior to the official start of the new school year, which gives schools very little time to prepare. In a press briefing just two days earlier, the minister had given a strong indication that schools would open the traditional way while the necessary uh, health and safety protocols would be put in place. Several school boards also announced that they were busy putting the required protocols in place to be able to receive their students in the new school year. As far as online learning is concerned, only one school board, the Protestant Christian School Board, mentioned that it was prepared to offer in-school teaching or to go over to virtual teaching immediately. As the minister of ECYS is also the head of public education, it would have been good if he could have assured parents, students, and the public that the public schools are also prepared and ready to offer online teaching when school starts on August 10, 2020. Public education is the second largest group of schools with approximately 1,400 students, 160 teachers, and seven schools. With this amount of students, teachers and schools, the government should actually be leading the, cha the charge and setting the example as far as online learning is concerned. It would set parents' minds at ease knowing that our schools are ready to offer their children quality education during these trying times, the release reads in part. And with that, viewers, we've come to the end of this edition of SXM Daily News for you this evening. I am Valerie Van Putten, thanking you for joining me. And just a reminder that this and other programs are available online. Simply log on to stmartinmediacenter.com for viewing. And on behalf of the SXM Daily News team, we thank you for watching and plan on meeting you right back here again tomorrow. <music>